Welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and I got a haircut. And I like it, even though my three-year-old daughter said it looked funny, and she didn't like it. And she wanted me to get something different next time. That made me sad. I'm going to do something a little different today. Today is September 11th, 2021. It is the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks on the United States. Since I've joined BookTube, I found that I feel pretty old. I'm 37 years old. Uh, on the September 11th attacks, I was 17. I was in a senior in high school. 20 years later, it's hard to remember what it was like then. And I thought that it might be helpful to kind of walk through what that day was like as much as I can remember for people on BookTube that are maybe a little bit younger who don't have either the point of view of being in the United States or were so young that they don't really recall that day. And, and what you remember now is really just the coverage that you've seen since. And there's definitely, technology has really sped things up so there are things that we had to deal with in 2001 um, that are kind of hard to picture today. Before I go into kind of that rambling commentary, I did write a related poem in 2005 for a class in college, and I thought that might help to start it off. It's related to September 11th, um, and it was for a Latino literature class. So this is called When the Skies Fell Silent Over Nashville. <clears throat> On the inside of my gold satin finish academy class ring, just under my name, is inscribed Never Forget. It was Tuesday, a Tuesday like any other Tuesday, maybe better. Sweet golden sunshine, cool autumn breeze, senior year, first semester, and I had a full plate. Advanced placement courses for the entree, sports on the side. Life was defined by three important questions. How much gas is in my car? What college application is due? Who was that pretty girl? Second period, a second period like one on any other day. Maybe better. Honors literature and Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Who in their right mind cares about Shakespeare's senior year? It happened. In a fraction of time, I still cannot comprehend. It all changed forever. She walked in. Her face was a telegram notifying us of the death of our innocence. Even a senior in high school knows that look. It's a look that cuts through you. It's a look no boy of 17 wants to see on an adult's face. It was the look of fear, of utter amazement, and history, horrific history. Earlier this morning, two planes crashed in the World Trade Center, and a few minutes ago, one flew into the Pentagon. Abandonment. Abandoned by reason, abandoned by sensibility, abandoned by authority, I abandoned myself. Second period, Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, and nothing mattered anymore. The life-defining three important questions were replaced with one. Where did my world go? Third period. A third period in a new world. Art class and sketches. 150-yard trek to art. Listening to the gaggle of high school students as I passed. Each high school-educated goose honking his own story of how he saw the towers crash to the ground. How he saw people jump from the windows. Art class. The end of my world and still lives of a car in the street. Colors, symmetry, and angles. Nothing mattered. Nothing but the silence. In a class of 20, we were all alone. Together, all separated from each other. From a thousand miles away, I felt the impact of four planes. From a thousand miles away, I heard the people cry. From a thousand miles away, I saw the explosion. I saw people jumping to their deaths. From a thousand miles away, I heard the piercing silence in the skies over Nashville, and I will never forget. So that was from my junior year of college, describing my senior year of high school. I went to a very nerdy high school in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. That's where I grew up. And uh, at this point in my life, I had, we were in the first semester of our final year in high school. We were applying to colleges. I had applied to a number of colleges but I was leaning towards a military path. I had applied to three service academies, um, the Coast Guard Academy, which is where I went, uh, the Naval Academy, which was my, my safety school, my backup, um, and the Merchant Marine Academy. There are five service academies in the United States. The Naval Academy feeds officers to the Navy and to the Marine Corps. The U.S. Military Academy at West Point provides officers to the U.S. Army, uh, U.S. Air Force Academy, provides officers to the U.S. Air Force. 
and I guess now the U.S. Space Force. And um, the U.S. Coast Guard Academy uh, feeds officers to the U.S. Coast Guard. There's also a U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Its students are uh, Navy Reserve officers. And there's an opportunity for them to cross commission to other services. And uh, they serve on merchant ships. So I was already looking at schools that had some military aspect. I also had a Navy ROTC, which is a Reserve Officer Training Corps scholarship to Vanderbilt University and to Auburn. What you probably won't remember, unless you're in your 30s or 40s, at the time there was something called Napster on, in the, on the internet, and you could find songs for free. And eventually it was shut down, but at the time it wasn't. And we didn't know it was wrong, or we maybe suspected it, but it seemed like if it was up, it probably wasn't a problem with it. Um, there was even a better site, I thought, called Morpheus, and you could basically create your own you could burn your own cds with songs that you wanted you have basically your whole playlist because we didn't have ipods i don't even know if we had mp3s at the time um we didn't mp3 players when i would drive into school i would listen to cds i burned i wasn't listening to the news there wasn't any cut in to what i was listening to it was just straight cd all the way to school at this time people didn't they weren't connected to everything you could search on the internet you could ask jeeves or do a Yahoo search. Um, I don't believe we were Googling at that point, and there wasn't Twitter. People didn't really carry cell phones. I had a, a big old cell phone that would stay in my car in case there was an emergency. I would plug into the cigarette lighter, but you didn't have the connectivity that you have now. I listened to music the whole way into school. I went into my first class, and I don't remember what my first class was. My second period was honors English. For people who don't know, Nashville is about a thousand miles away from Washington, D.C. And, and New York, you know, give or take. We were sitting in class and, and we were going through the usual things that you would go through as a student. And a teacher came in to talk to our teacher. Our teacher was Miss Jackson. Now, you can kind of read the body language. When we saw this teacher come in, something was wrong. We didn't know what. It could have been teacher politics. It could have been crime outside the school. It could have been something that happened in the school, something that happened to a student. We didn't know. From the poem, I reveal that uh, the teacher did tell us what happened. We were told right after the the plane hit the Pentagon, which is the uh, headquarters for the Department of Defense in the United States, the big building outside of D.C. and Arlington, Virginia. And that was a big moment because, one, we didn't know about those earlier attacks. Something like that on the Pentagon is basically a declaration of war. By the second plane, you're realizing this isn't an accident. This was much more direct because we didn't have any lead up. There wasn't a build up to this. It was, we were in second period and we found out about all three planes. There was a fourth plane in Pennsylvania that crashed uh, when the crew, United 93, uh, tried to take it over. So I don't remember us really doing a whole lot of work in that class after that. This is not a time period where you would have been able to get out a cell phone and look up stuff on your on your phone. The phones didn't do that. <laughs> you couldn't search the internet. There was no way to do that. There were computer labs in school. There may still be computer labs in school, but there were computer labs, and that's where you had a computer that you could access the internet. Or there were some rooms in our school building that had TVs. People had TVs on. We were walking to our next class. Now, in my class, I was already thinking about the military. My One of my best friends... Um, who was also in that class, a guy named Brian, um, he was also looking at the Naval Academy, he was looking at the Citadel, and he was looking at the uh, Virginia Military Institute. And we both looked at each other and, and thought, like, this is going to change everything. Right? This is going to be a war. But we were walking to art class, and as we were walking to art class, we were finding out more. We were finding out that these planes that crashed into the World Trade Center, we were picturing as these tiny Cessnas were actually commercial airliners, jets big planes. Not only had they crashed into both of the World Trade Center, the, the main towers, um, but one of the towers had just collapsed um, and people were jumping out of windows because of the heat. Uh, they were trying to escape the heat and they were above the fire and there wasn't a way to get down from the, the upper floors past where fire was. Fire from the planes and the jet fuel that was in, in the um, explosion. People were jumping to their deaths. Third period, we, we did still lifes outside of cars. And, and you want to talk about an absolutely worthless <laughs> exercise. Drawing pictures when you're aware of the world changing 
it is very hard to focus. And fortunately, our art teacher understood that. This was not really a way to get our mind off of it, but a way to have some normalcy, even though it was, it was really hard to experience that. But it was outside. I mentioned in the poem, it was a perfect day. It was a perfect fall, cloudless, sunny, beautiful day. Perfect day. I think a lot of times where you're in an urban setting or a downtown suburban setting, you get very used to air traffic noises. Outside of Nashville, there is a international airport. I don't know if we were on the flight path for airplanes, but you know, you're outside, you can hear jets all the time. It's kind of this rumble. And it's not something in your face. It's kind of this background white noise almost that you just adapt to. It was silent. And that's where the name of the poem comes from because it was silent. You couldn't appreciate the sounds that you were so accustomed to until they weren't there anymore. And it was so silent and so still outside that it was very eerie for us because that was, you can hear things all day long about something happening a thousand miles away to your fellow Americans. It will hurt and you will not know what to do, especially as a high school student. But it feels much more real when you are experiencing through your senses the change. All flights in the United States were grounded. There was no air traffic anywhere. It was piercing, the silence. There's nothing you could do during class to find out what's going on. There's no tweets. There's no Twitter. There's no Facebook. There are some news sites, but you need to have a computer, not a, not a phone. You need to actually go into a room with a computer, log on, maybe the school library, log on and search or watch TV, which is really the, the method that most people would use. My mom worked at my school. She was a guidance counselor. She's retired now. I remember going in there at lunch to her office and just, I didn't break down, but lots of emotion. Right? It's a lot of like fear and, and anger and what are we going to do? What is this? You know, I think what we lose track of then is we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know when it was going to stop. Um, we also lose track of the fact that some other things happen over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of years. No one knew that that this these four planes were the only four planes that this was going to happen to. No, you didn't know if this was going to happen in your city. You didn't know if this was going to happen to buses, trains, planes, well, planes, we knew, trains, you know, boats, you just, you just didn't know. I had an AP physics test that day. And you want to talk about a test that you do not give a shit about. It is your AP physics test on the day that your country is attacked. We still took the test. I don't remember how I did. I remember not being happy that we were not in the mindset not in the frame of mind to take a test. I like just didn't care. What did it matter? What did my AP physics test that day matter when all of this other stuff happened? 3,000 people died. That night, you know, we got home. Everyone was watching TV. It was 90, 99% of the time you were in front of the TV watching, hearing all of these. You were watching the coverage. You were hearing all these interviews. And, and there are some interviews that still stick in my mind a woman with a pretty thick new york accent talking about how people are jumping out of the windows sound bites that that i will not forget my parents and i went to a sports bar that night um to watch the speech the address from president george w bush they had big tvs and we we were there to see what was gonna be said we did a good job delivering those remarks everyone stood up and either we were either singing God Bless America or the National Anthem and people chanted USA. The next day was Wednesday and I had a reoccurring thing with my friends from school. We would eat at Waffle House before school. We'd go to Waffle House and then drive, you know, another 20 minutes into school into the city. I remember going there and we had the newspapers that had the coverage and we talked about it. And it wasn't, it was emotionally, it was emotionally a draining time um, for, I think for everyone in the country. I mean, you have people that lost friends and family. Um, you had people from the New York, 
D.C., Pennsylvania area that saw firsthand um, the destruction and the loss of lives and the families um, that were impacted. But I think across the country and, and really in many ways across the world, there was a shift and people picked up on that. And it is hard to prepare for such a, a major shift. I don't, I don't really think there is a way to prepare for it. It's really just, you have to react to it. In my point of view, we finished out the rest of the year. Um, things had really changed. We Every senior class went on a senior trip to like New York or our major city, maybe Philadelphia, somewhere else. Ours was canceled. We ended up, I don't remember what, I think we went skiing, but it wasn't really like, a, it was a ski trip, but it wasn't like a senior trip. And, and it wasn't a major metropolitan area. For me, I got into the, the Coast Guard Academy, accepted my appointment, went there. At the time, the Coast Guard Academy was in the Department of Transportation. In less than a year, it would move over to the brand new Department of Homeland Security, and we would experience some of those new Homeland Security missions. It's hard to watch the coverage. Every year, we watch all this coverage, and it is hard to do that sometimes, I think. I haven't watched anything today. I. I used to break down watching stuff when I was younger. I think in many ways I've just kind of filed it away. But it's amazing that it's been 20 years. And it's amazing there are adults in the world who were born after this happened. Because it still feels pretty fresh. So I joined the Coast Guard. I was an officer in the Coast Guard for a number of years. Here's a book that we got while I was a cadet called um, All Available Boats. It is about the evacuation of Manhattan Island on September 11th, 2001. Oh, it's signed by two people. Actually, you had people that were running from the towers, running from this debris, and they ended up on the southern tip of Manhattan, which is an island, and they had no way of getting out of there. So, the Coast Guard helped organize uh, a boat lift. One of the schools I applied to, the Merchant Marine Academy, they had a ship that also responded to try to help evacuate people from lower Manhattan. Here's one of the pictures from the little, this was a, a handout for the event in 2005 where I got this book. There's a picture of boats lined up and this book talks about that. I'll, I'll just read. In cooperation with the US Coast Guard, the captains and crews of New York ferries, tugboats, fireboats, and private vessels evacuate over 300,000 people and the largest maritime rescue since Dunkirk. That's kind of what I, I remember. I mean, it really is. Your, your memory can, can play tricks on you, but um, I think it, as far as I can tell, I, I think it stayed pretty true. So if you have any questions, especially if you weren't alive during this time and uh, you wanted to know kind of what was going on, let me know. And I can provide a little bit more information. My poem was about the never forget on the inside of my academy class ring. This is probably not going to show up. It is going to be very hard to make this. Well, it says never forget. You'll just have to just have to trust me. Anyway, so take a moment today if you can and just remember people who were affected directly. Honestly, it's it's all of us. We've all been affected. So 20 years. It's amazing. And I hope we continue to never forget.